Alright guys, welcome back to the Department of Filtration. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fleet Guard LF3608 wheel filter. So on the box, it's not a particular lot, it's just a fairly standard box. So the LF3608 Fleet Guard filter fits uh, uh, Land Cruiser diesels 1HZ, 1HD, uh, maybe some others like that, but they're the primary applications here. So it's a fairly nice big filter, it feels quite heavy. A date code on the top. Now, part number made in Indonesia and a few instructions there on the side. So, I've got a nice plastic cover with a nice easy grab tab, which is always good. Nice and easy there. Six inlet holes. Looks like a whole heap of threads in there. Nice rubber gasket. Doesn't sit real far above the top there, but this also isn't a flat gasket. It's a one there. Nice curved top one. The little retaining ring there that sits under that lip. It's quite nice. Oh, and so, so, so I forgot to mention, this filter is about $20. At any given storage, you compare that to a Ryko, and this part number is about $40. So I'm just in to see what we're like on the inside, but if it's anything like we've seen that other fleet guard on this channel, it's going to be pretty good. So hopefully it lives up to our standard and we'll have a look. We'll get it cut open and come back. Rightio ladies and gents, I've had this cut open and I've had a bit of a peek inside myself and uh, my word is hold on to your hats. If you were thinking this was going to be a, an old normal oil filter review with a standard old filter, then I'm prepared to be amazed. As far as I understand, this is how the filters on the 1HZ uh, diesels are meant to be. And the fleet guard actually do the job of replicating that. So, first up we got a base plate as we saw. Nice and clean, really thick. You can see how thick that is there and a huge amount of threads. So one, two, three, four, five, six threads. That's really quite nice there. And our standard rubber any drain back valve, but on these, I can't remember which way up they mounted. I think they might be mounted down ways, so that covers up those holes nicely. A little bit loose on there, but it's got the top where the element sits into that and the element there, so that would press up nicely against that. And it's got a nice supporting stripes there, so it'll come back up. Now we get to the exciting bit, and then we'll reveal what's inside this filter. The Akin. Yeah, it's nice. Just a, just a fairly standard cam, but good quality. Yeah, about five, six mil. Sturdy for the size that it is. And that side, I got a nice big coil spring that fits in the bottom of our element there. Nice and wide to spread the load out. 
Now we've got a nice divot for it to fit in down the bottom there. Help keep it located. Now, as we can see here, we're actually looking at a dual element filter. So I've got two separate sections here. We've got what appears to be in the bottom to be a fairly standard cellulose filter section. I assume that this, and it's got the bypass in this one end. And I'm going to assume that that does same job as the normal part of the media. And then we have also got. Let's see if I can get this in. It's stuck in there real well, that is. Which is what you want, I suppose. See how tight that was in there. Our top section, which through these holes appears to be some type of synthetic media. Now, as far as I understand, this we've essentially got a a full flow and a bypass filter in one. It's not the same as a as a fleet guard Stratopore Venturi combo filter, which I do have a video coming up on of what they're like. But this is quite a different design idea. As far as I understand, this is how the OEM Toyota one is meant to be. Um, So this one's going to do a basic job. It's going to allow the oil to flow through when it is cold. Let it through but not filter to the greatest amount. And then this is our one that's going to filter nice and fine. It's even got reinforce, reinforcing in there. So you got this bad boy which obviously a little rubber thing on the top. Serves the purpose of joining the two canisters together. And also, would act as a standpipe. So, we've visited this in some other videos before, but to give you an idea. So, in normal filters, just say that's there. Now... When they're upside down, I'm pretty sure these ones are mounted upside down. When they're this way up, not that way up. If it sits for a while, then the oil just obviously drains back down those holes. Now this valve, when it's pressed up against there, serves the purpose of stopping the oil to flowing back out the outlet holes. The one major issue with that is the fact that the oil can still flow out the outlet hole and eventually all your oil is going to seep through the media and then down through the outlet hole. The idea of this contraption is that when it sits up against there, um, Yeah, don't worry. Um, it's actually not going to work as a standpipe very well. I'll tell you it just so you know anyway, but on a filter, if this was a standpipe, it would sit on there and it would stop the oil from draining out the center tube because if it's up to this height, then any oil below this level is not going to be able to drain out because it can't go up and over. But in our particular circumstance, I'm not sure if that goes 
far enough. Oh no, I think it does actually. Anyway, and it's pressed up against there. Because the filter sits around that rim, it does actually press on the end there and act as a standpipe as well. So, so that's that there. So, very interesting designing. Obviously, moving on from those bits, we've got a very couple of very nice looking filter elements here. Not a whole lot of glue spillage, but it looks like there's still a decent amount. Metal end caps, coil spring loaded bypass. Got our locating notches here on the top, which makes it so it doesn't move around too much, stay centered. We've got inner as well as outer. Uh, cage, I suppose. So, we'll go ahead and I'll try and get these cut open. This one is going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but we'll get them cut open, have a look at what the meat is like, and we'll go from there. Oh, yeah, so I got the meat is cut out to some extent. I've got the normal cellulose I'll cut out. Um, looks like pretty nice glue all around there. I've got a ho holes in the core instead of levers, but <clears throat> they're really nicely formed. You can see that there's definitely no sharp edges or nothing on there. They could cut the media. They're just real nice. Um, and in terms of cellulose, so it is pretty thin, but it's not the only media in the filter. 30 mil but they packed it really nice and long this is so this is 2.7 meters long um this section of cellulose to me it just looks like our standard fleet guard cellulose but we'll have a bit of a look under the microscope later now in terms of this i haven't cut the whole thing out mostly because it was terribly hard even to just get this bit out but i've cut the metal casing off and that looks the same to me like very nice no sharp edges or nothing there well glued in so there's definitely no problems with the elements um in here. now in terms of the media on this obviously white and i'm just going to say so I'm going to guess it's going to be about the same length, but it is a fray taller than the cellulose section of the filter. Now, to me, it doesn't really feel like micro glass synthetic media, um, such as the fleet guards stratopore media that's quite different to this it's sort of it's this almost seems like it's just white paper but you can see it, a few more fibers and stuff in it i'm thinking i know the ryko syntec they've classed as a synthetic filter but their base the base of the media is actually paper I'm thinking this might be something like this, but we'll put both of these under the microscope now. Just cellulose first, normal, and then this. I'll have a look at what they're like. See if we can work out a little bit more about them. All right, so that's the two of them under the microscope there. Um, the white one certainly looks a lot finer than the cellulose. So I think it's certainly going to be doing more of a uh, bypass job. So the, this media is just standard and allows the oil to flow through 
uh, when it's cold and thick and just takes big chunks out and maintains flow through the filter. Now, where on the other hand, this part is really quite fine and filters down to a small micron, gets more contaminants out of the oil, but it flows a little bit slower. So, um, you can't have the whole filter out of the oil of this, or otherwise it wouldn't let enough oil through to the engine in particular conditions. And you can see also cellulose in terms of thickness. It's up about 0.8 of a mil. Whereas the thickness on our this dust considerably thinner. Have a look at it. No, it's closer to about 0.6, so that's um, a little bit thin. But this is a really nice feature. Like if I had to pick one filter to go on my car, that's a standard production filter. Um, and if, if I had a choice of pretty much any, this one would certainly be on one at the top of the list. Very close to the top of the list anyway. It's very nice idea construction and it's well done there's no issues that i can see you you know got coil spring and dramatic valves even got a stand pipe to keep the oil in there it's nice solid tin very nice solid cores that are well done now i've got our two nice media here so that's it folks it's the fleet guard lf 3608 oil filter.